Greetings, everybody. Welcome to the Wednesday, July 31st, 2019 episode of Free Webinar Wednesdays. This is Eric Cook over here at WSI Digital, where we, you know what? I totally spaced on the uh, the new tagline. I'm not in my office and I don't have it written on my whiteboard because I don't have a whiteboard with me. So I'm going to go with the old one. Maybe some of you out there in Free Webinar Wednesday's world, or maybe Ellie, who is joining us today from our office. Um, I think it's something along the lines of, we help businesses connect and engage with their customers online. Let me know if that sounds familiar to everybody, uh, but I think that's a new tagline. I really should have that memorized by now, um, but it is what it is. Um, does that sound right to you, Ellie? That sounds about right. That sounds about right. So. Um, we'll go very excited. We'll go with it. We'll go with it. Um, you may have noticed a couple of things when joining the webinar today. Um, my good friend, and I still consider him a free webinar Wednesdays co-founder, Jeff Simpkins. Um, those of you that have just came across free webinar Wednesdays in the last year or so probably wonder who this mystery Jeff Simpkins guy is that always appeared on the intro slide with CBCI, formerly Community Bank Consulting. Um, I am very happy. Jeff is super busy doing his thing. And when we started this together uh, way back, our first show, Ellie, you got any like guess when Free Webinar Wednesdays was started? Keep in mind, I left the bank in 2007. So ballpark, I know mm -hmm. I wasn't supposed to ask you any tough questions, but I'm going to do that yeah. right now. 1,012? Is that early? It was, it was April 1st, which is kind of funny because maybe it could have been an April Fool's Day joke. April 1st of 2009. Wow. So the free webinar Wednesdays, while well, we haven't made every single Wednesday because they are live shows, free webinar Wednesdays has been going on for over 10 years. And I looked at the number of registrants that we have in the GoToWebinar system. And today we have 2009 registrants. So 2009 we were started and we have, as of today, 2009 registrants in the GoToWebinar system. Um, all 2009 people don't join every week, but I'm thinking if I buy a lottery ticket today, it's going to have to have 2009 somewhere in there because that seems to be the magic number today. But Jeff has agreed, and we had a conversation last week. This isn't a surprise, and uh, we are still very, very good friends and talk on a regular basis. Just aren't having those conversations here on Free Webinar Wednesdays. So Jeff may be back as a guest at some point. I would very much love to have him uh, hop on. He is very focused in the financial industry, but a lot of the stuff that he does is related to operational efficiencies and process and procedure and kind of taking a project and nurturing it from start to finish. So I do want to give a good plug to Jeff and make sure that if he has a chance to listen to this, I appreciate everything that you helped with getting free webinar Wednesdays off the ground. And I know we've been doing a lot of discussion internally within WSI as to how free webinar Wednesdays can continue to evolve. Um, I was at a Top Gun training session with some of my WSI colleagues out in Toronto a couple of weeks ago. And uh, several of my consultant friends from around the world were very surprised that we've been doing a webinar show for the last 10 years. And they're like, how did you even keep that going? What do you talk about? Um, and I say, well, I get on and I ramble about stuff like this. But there was some enthusiasm and some interest from some of my other colleagues that also do a lot of really cool stuff online, also are very well versed in business strategy and digital and social and all things that happen in the in the world of electronics and business. And so we'll probably be bringing in some more WSI guests. This never was, and I don't ever want it to be uh, a commercial or make you feel like if you're joining a webinar, I'm trying to sell you something. I really want to make this more informational and to teach you 
the things that I know and to share the information. And if you decide that what we are sharing sounds pretty cool and you don't want to do it yourself and you want to give us a shot, we would be very honored. But at the end of the day, these are really designed to help educate and make sure that you, the audience, whether you're joining live and you can ask questions and interact and comment on my cool new hipster image that I'm using for my headshot, uh, or you're catching it on a replay, we really want to make sure that these are informational and, and help you uh, run your business, build your brand, do more, be more efficient, whatever the case may be. Um, I'm also excited to uh, kind of remind everybody, I think this was out last week, and we actually had a show last week, and we have the recap on the website this week, so we have uh, a actual turnaround. Um, we went through last week the 12 elements of a digital strategy and I used our Digital Minds book as the basis for all 12 of those chapters. I just received the uh, final draft of my edited chapter for the next third edition of our book that is yet to be named, but it is coming out in October. My chapter is on chatbots and the conversational marketing impact on conversion and customer acquisition. So when you think of things like Facebook Messenger and WhatsApp and different ways that you can interact with text messages or website chat and artificial intelligence and bots, um, got a, uh, read it over again and uh, our editors did a great job, added a couple more things. I'm really excited uh, not only about having another chapter and a third book, but also reading all of my colleagues' chapters because um, the Digital Minds book that is the second edition was published back in 2015. Still very relevant, but we're adding new things to this book that didn't exist even back in 2015. So keep an eye out for that. And when that book is released, I'll be sure to let everybody know and we'll do a review and might even start the process of inviting the chapter authors on and spending some time just having them introduce the chapter and talk a little bit about what they wrote, some of the high points. I think that'll be a, a really, really good discussion and give us 12 really good uh, additional webinars that we can maybe wrap up the year with. So today's show, and I've mentioned her a couple times, Ellie Humphreys, who has actually, I think, been on at least one or two free webinar Wednesdays shows in the past, is joining us today. Ellie is in our office. Uh, full disclosure, Ellie also happens to be my niece. Um, as somebody that worked with his father for 13 wonderful years while I was a community banker, one of my father's funny statements was, there's nothing wrong with nepotism as long as you keep it in the family. And uh, we're doing that here at WSI. So Ellie uh, has been part of the team now up for three years. Yep. I believe. Um, so what I've decided, what I, yeah, so what I decided to do today is chat a little bit about one, a millennial's perspective in the world of digital, talk about kind of her role as a digital marketer within an agency. So whether your business has millennials that are in the digital space and you wonder what they do, or you're looking to hire somebody, or you're working with an agency that has millennials like Ellie doing stuff for you. I figured it would be a good idea just to kind of get in her head a little bit and some of the things that she works on for our clients and some of the things that she's paying attention to and the new things that she's learning. And we're just going to have a little discussion and talk a little bit about all the cool stuff that's going on in the, in the online world. So before we jump into everything, Ellie, why don't you give the folks on free webinar Wednesdays a little bit of your background, where you went to school, um, stuff that you like to do. I know you're, you're doing some coaching, which is pretty cool. So introduce Ellie Humphreys to the audience. All right. Uh, my name's Ellie Humphreys. I went to Ferris State University for my undergrad degree in marketing with a focus in project management. While I was at Ferris, I played volleyball for a year and I also played club soccer for two years. Um, I also studied business to business, direct marketing, digital marketing, and um, other lengths of project management. I got certificates actually in all four of those subjects as well. Um, I graduated 
college in May 2017 and instantly got enrolled into the MBA program at Ferris. So all through that, I was also working as an intern at WSI. And as soon as May hit and I graduated, I became a full employee for two over a little two years now, but with the internship, probably three. Um, so I'm getting my MBA currently business administration with other focuses in management. Um, basically, I wanted to get my MBA to try to open more doors for me and to learn more about how to be a part of an organization in many aspects. I wanted to learn about how to be a part of a business, but also how to run a business maybe down the road. Um, I'm focused a lot in project management as that is kind of my end goal of what I want to do, marketing and management. So I'm doing that while also doing account management, client management, project management, marketing, and so forth for WSI. So kind of, it's kind of nice and, being in school. What? And you're, you're, also, you're also doing uh, girls volleyball management if i'm not mistaken so lots of management i coach, talk a little bit about yeah you're, you're coaching i coach aau club volleyball uh ages 13 to 15 and i'm actually also going to be coaching high school volleyball this fall for freshmen and jv um so that has also taught me a lot uh kind of I, it's kind of helps me with managing people because it's more of a coaching aspect. So trying to help people learn and kind of lead them not only through sports, but their life. So it's kind of helped me a lot actually open up and how in talking and getting more comfortable with things because I'm a, a leader and I have to lead by example in front of kids who are, you know, in eighth grade going into high school. That's why I got the high school position is because I was told I'd be really good at nurturing kids into helping them transition from one level to an, to the next, being middle school to high school and sports in school. So that's also helped out a lot too. Yeah. That's also one of the ways here at WSI, we keep the pulse on what the new digital platforms are because even Ellie being, uh, you know, in her 20s, will hear of social platforms and apps that the girls are chatting about. And um, I think they snuck one in on you the other day that even made you feel like an old person like me because you hadn't heard of it before. So we can we can tap that audience and make sure we're staying on the bleeding edge of what all the youth are wanting to use to communicate and stay connected on social media. Basically, little, learned about little, two apps. I never knew about. <laughs> <laughs> so not that we'll probably use those a whole lot in our banking world, but it's always good to have that, you know, available for the next cocktail party or networking event so we can bring that up. So, well, let's, uh, you know, you, you do a ton of stuff for us. And I know when we were kind of what's happening earlier today, you know, we've got a couple of people Madison on our team is actually at a Facebook event down in Cincinnati, and we've got one other individual on vacation. So the little bit of feeling like we're drowning and then things are picking up and, uh, you know, you, you wear a lot of hats. But what I thought we could talk about at least initially, and then if there's other stuff that springs to mind, we can dive into those. But I'd like to chat about kind of the, the role and the things that you're doing in the area of video. I've talked on free webinar Wednesdays a lot about how video is very powerful. Um, we heard about video when you and I were at social media marketing world, I attended the financial brand forum. Video is a big uh, topic there from not just a brand building and a personality perspective, but also even advertising. So I thought we could talk a little bit about video. I'd also like to talk a little bit about the reporting process that we're starting to implement for some of our clients and leveraging the Google Data Studio and how you're playing a role in that and the information that we're sharing with our clients to help them understand the results and maybe some insights on how businesses you know, might wanna start thinking about if they don't have a dashboard-like environment to monitor KPIs within their business. And then lastly, kind of along the dashboard line, um, 
you are using a service and we got to meet the founders of cloud campaign while we were in San Diego, um, a dashboard service for social media posting and um, just kind of give an overview of how you're combining maybe even the video that you're doing with the social posting and how those two get tied together. So a video GDS or social dashboard, is there anything else that you think we should add to that list or do you want to pick one of those three and we can get, get into a little discussion? Let's start with video. I, video I, I had a feeling you'd go there because that's the funnest one. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So I don't think we need to go in and do a demo, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up the Wave Video just because that's the platform that we're using. But while I pull that up, maybe you could talk a little bit big picture about some of the things we brought back from social media marketing world, maybe some of the examples that we're doing internally within WSI, and then maybe chat a little bit about some of the conversations we recently had with clients about tying video into their advertising and uh, and how that is starting to roll out. Yeah, okay. So basically, when we were in social media marketing world, I tried to sit in on a lot of sessions regarding video as those seemed to honestly take over half of that conference because video is and has been for the last couple of years the number one um, piece of social content that is being viewed the most and is creating the most in lead generation. And honestly, it's not that surprising because if you get on Facebook or any social platform these days, even Instagram, more than half the content is video. So I think people are starting to realize that video drags people in more than text on a page. Not many people and it's not just because people can be lazy, but no one really wants to read, you know, paragraphs of text on Facebook that have an image at the bottom. Everyone rather be engaged in an interactive video, even if it doesn't have voice and it just has text, it's still more entertaining. And another thing that came from social media marketing world is that video for marketing purposes actually helps produce um, a better chance of your like getting um, how would I say this getting noticed on a search engine so videos actually create um, a lot better SEO generation than most types of content which is really important especially when you're trying to do advertisements on Google or Facebook um, video also seems to have more clicks and more interaction than most other types of content so what we learned out there was not only how to get people to watch your videos and stuff but how to make these videos interactive there's a bunch of apps we learned about that actually will put the text over the screen and you can make these videos and read off the screen so people are like why and how are you so good at talking on video but it's because they have the words right there on their on their phone while they're taking a video. So there's so many different tricks and hacks and so much, so much we learned about that can really make quality videos for um, your company or just to post on your page. Like Eric posted one the other day on his LinkedIn about someone who gave him a cookie at the airport and it got so much engagement just because it was a video and I can only imagine if it was a post it probably would have gotten some engagement but not nearly as much because it's way more entertaining to hear about Eric getting cookies from the airport over a video <laughs> well and that also was part of the story of me having to sleep in the airport and wake up on my 49th birthday on the floor of the Minneapolis airport due to flight issues so the cookie was extra special because I I told the 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 lady that gave me the cookie that I had to sleep on the floor and she gave me an extra one. So if you ever get the opportunity to fly out of the Fort Wayne, Indiana airport and you return um, and you return during normal hours, the volunteers there are, are happily waiting for you at the exit to give you a uh, cookie. And if you're not there, they just put a little basket and it's honor system. Um, but I got two cookies and uh just decided to go back to my Jeep before I hit the road and 
share my thoughts. And uh, I just thought it was really cool because I had a crappy day. It was a crappy travel. I mean, it was a great conference, but nobody likes to sleep on the floor of an airport and especially wake up all by yourself on your birthday. Um, and so it really kind of ended my trip on a positive note. And when I shared it in video, like Ellie said, it, it didn't go viral or anything like the old spice guy on a horse, but it certainly got the message across a whole lot better than it would have. If it had been just a regular post. So I popped over to our Facebook page, which if you are not following us, please do so. We're just now starting to get that up and running. And uh, I've been doing most of the Facebook just personally. So with Ellie and others involved, um, but we've got some videos here and these are the did you know videos that Ellie's been creating in that wave video platform and um, kind of pushing those out on a regular basis. So Ellie, maybe share a little bit around the story of the did you know videos and um, kind of gaining some traction there and what our attempt is to, to produce those and what the objective is. Yeah, so the did you know videos, honestly, just one day I was messing around with our new video platform and I thought, wow, it would be kind of cool if we push something out every week, but not something that was trying to sell people or show people what we do, but more so just to kind of throw tips out there for people that follow us. Um, so I, cr I started creating a series of videos called Did You Know? And they're typically posted either Tuesday or Thursday every week. And we have a whole list of topics we're gonna cover, but they're about 30 to 45 seconds long. And they're typically about social media. So um, we've done Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, email marketing. I think the next one we're releasing tomorrow is going to be about chat bots. But they're all basically little facts and statistics about how people, consumers, and businesses are engaging with social media. And I try, I do research um, to create these videos because I want to get the most recent statistics and facts out there for those platforms and i try to honestly get the ones that are that people read and they're like oh my gosh no way so some of the statistics are kind of crazy which makes it even cooler because it makes the video a little bit more entertaining and engaging but that's kind of the gist of these videos and it, it's also to kind of show people that we can do video and we we use it for our own uh, marketing and engagement but it's more of a customer, client, just a way to engage with people, but not make them feel like we're trying to sell them something more so just to let them know stuff that they might not have known about social platforms or the type of marketing that they're doing. So we actually push these videos out to uh, two personal LinkedIn pages, our business LinkedIn page, our Facebook page, and our company Twitter page. So these videos kind of go everywhere. After I make them, I download them and I go and do our social platform that Eric was talking about called Cloud Campaign. And I schedule them out, like I said, about every Tuesday or Thursday, about 1.30 in the afternoon, since that's a, one of the best times to be posting anything on social media. So yeah, do you want to go into more of the video or Cloud Campaign? Well, um, let's just kind of see if there's any questions on video um, while we're waiting. As a reminder, you can use your chat function. Um, there's a number of video platforms that are available. Wave happens to be the one that we ended up gravitating towards. Um, I know we've got colleagues in WSI that have used promo. They were also at Social Media Marketing World. Um, Wave actually was reviewed by corporate in Toronto, and WSI actually formed an official partnership with the with the folks at Wave. So we're pretty excited about the platform. Um, Ellie, maybe talk a little bit about the conversation we had yesterday, and we, we won't mention any client names, of course. Um, but we were meeting with one of our clients on kind of their monthly review of their ad strategy. We're doing some mortgage lending ads and we're getting good results on display and, and paid search. 
but we tossed out the idea of potentially doing some some video, maybe YouTube pre-roll or pushing some video out to Facebook. Um, and so maybe share a little bit about their reaction. And then they also have an agency that we partner with. And then kind of some observations from that conversation with the agency, because I think there's some some pretty cool video stuff on the horizon for us, at least for that client that'll give us some nice traction and show some some other cool things that we can do. Yeah. So um, we mentioned to one of our clients uh, video advertising and how we just started kind of getting into it and the whole gist of it and the platform we use. And we kind of started to see after doing video for a couple of our clients how well, um, because we run obviously like data reports and stuff off of our videos. So to see how people are engaging and um, just interacting with video in general on social media, it's so much different than just normal posts. So that's kind of where we started to see a big difference in conversions and lead generation. So that's why when we were talking to our client on the phone yesterday, a different client, we mentioned this to them and how just these little snippet videos can really make a huge impact um, for your company. They're not really commercials, but more so 10 to 15 second videos you would see on Facebook that lead in with music playing and questions like, do you need a home loan? Or are you a first time home buyer? Or it could be anything. Do you want to know where the best ice cream shop is? It could be any kind of little tagline yeah. that drags you into the video. And then as the video is going on, then we, you kind of lay out some more groundwork about what this video is about. And then in the last five seconds, it's, are you, do you want to get in touch with us today? Are you interested? Click here. So it's all, it's a short video because most people between the minute of a video, the attention span, you have to catch them in the first 10 to 15 seconds. And if they're still not engaged by the 30th second, then that's, that's kind of that. So that's why we like to keep these videos short. So people get hooked, they're engaged. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh, the video is already over. It's 15 seconds and we're already throwing out an offer. So it's not really a sales piece. It's a more so we offer this. Can we help you? So that's kind of the cool thing. And when we showed our partnering marketing agency this platform, they were kind of mind blown and thought it was pretty awesome. And we only probably showed them a demonstration of it for 10 or 15 minutes. And they were like beyond impressed with it. So yeah, this, pla yeah, this platform is amazing. And I use it yep. just about every day to build. So the, and it, yeah. And again, there's, there's lots of platforms out there. They're not that expensive. I think the big trick with anything like this is the tool itself is probably going to be the lowest investment on your part. It's the expertise or the time to be able to go in and create the videos and have the, you know, the, the right approach of doing it. But certainly the tools themselves, to do a video like this five years ago, you would have had to spend thousands of dollars with professional software from Adobe that would have taken months to learn. Now you can do it a whole lot easier. But all the platforms that are out there that are similar to Wave are going to give you stock footage, but you can always add your own. You can uh, resize. I think this is one of the things that they were really impressed with is the ability for you to create basically one ad or one video, but then within the platform, you can see how on the screen it's changing the size so that it meets the needs because the days of producing one piece of content that goes everywhere are long gone. You can't do that anymore. All the platforms have different orientations and dimensions and pixel widths. Um, so that was, I think, another thing that was really impressive. And then you showed off the editor, changing text, adding buttons. Um, and adding I didn't GIFs see that really they had, they, they've got a Deadpool GIF. I'm gonna have to figure out a way for you to work a Deadpool GIF into one of these <laughs> videos. I'm a huge Deadpool fan. Um, so yeah, 
So anyway, some really good stuff there. And, you know, you can go to the wave if this is something that you're interested in. You can certainly view the pricing. Um, I'm not sure whether we've got any special pricing uh, options that we can share. Certainly, if this is a platform that you're interested in, we might be able to save you a little bit. But the cool part about it is you can start for free just to play around with it. You're going to have probably some watermarks and you're limited on how long you can make the videos. Um, but you have the ability to get in and kick the tires. And this is what Ellie did really is just kind of how does this one work? How does the other one work? And this one seemed to be the most comfortable environment for us. So since you already mentioned the social dashboard, why don't we go ahead and maybe talk a little bit more about that. And while I pull that up, I, I think a lot of people may be more familiar with a platform probably like Hootsuite, where you've got like a social posting dashboard where you can put in posts and schedule them to go. Um, but I'm going to pull up the cloud campaign platform, which is the which is the one that we're using right now. And then maybe talk a little bit about the concept of a social media dashboard and why it's nice, you know, like the metrics that you have and the scheduling options and some of the content suggestions that you can get. And then I'll just kind of browse around and show some screenshots here. Okay. So basically this social media platform, um, it's really nice because it actually holds content within the platform and what i mean by that is you don't have to go out and create your own content or find content you can go right into the platform and go to recommendations and type in whatever type of stuff you want to post about so i could type in uh twitter or facebook or you know running biking any type of topic that honestly interests you and it will pop up with a list of articles about that topic and you can go in and just select which ones you want and so i could fill up a whole library if i wanted of 10 posts and then i can go to my calendar and i can schedule those posts out we typically post monday wednesday friday at 1 30 in the afternoon um we also vary those times by 15 to 30 minutes. So sometimes we post at two or 1.15, just to kind of see what time of the day is getting more engagement. And the cool thing is, is this platform also produces analytics for your posts. And it actually tells you what types of posts are getting the best engagement. So they, there can be long text posts with an image or short text posts with an image or a video. Um, that there's I think about 12 to 15 that they actually separate it into and in our in our actual dashboard it will tell us which types of our posts are doing the best and getting the most engagement the most retweets likes shares so that's a really cool thing because you're not just posting stuff out and hoping it will get um, engagement you you know based off of the analytics that are truly coming from the posts themselves so that's another cool thing um scheduling is actually very simple you pick what you want to post you create a caption that caption goes out on all social medias and if the caption ends up being too long for a platform such as twitter it just kind of gets chopped in half and there'll be like a dot 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 so when you go and click on the post you'll actually be able to read it all so it's very cool because you don't have to go to each platform and individually post or make specific captions per post, but you are, you can do that actually in the platform if you want to. If you rather create a short and simple caption for Twitter, you have the ability to do that. Um, but we just go with the, everything goes out to every social platform. So um, we don't necessarily do that right now, but it is cool that you can do that. If there's something else you want to say on a different uh, post for a different, platform but yep so and it's cool because you can actually upload links so when i create these how did or do you know videos did you know i just take those videos and i upload them into the platform by um by their link and those get posted out so you can if i find a cool article or if eric sends me a cool article i'll just take the link to that article 
and I'll go to the calendar and I'll just upload the link, add my caption, add my tags, pick what platforms I want it to go out to. So it's just very, very convenient and time saving opposed to manually posting everything. Yeah. Um, I'm I like the, I like the, yeah, the, the, the reporting functionality is pretty cool too, because when you're using a dashboard like this, and, and this will kind of give us a segue into Google Data Studio and we'll wrap things up for today's show. But when you, when you use a dashboard that has access to all of the platforms that you're going to be using, the nice part is this has the ability to aggregate that data for you. So Ellie's got her LinkedIn. I've got my LinkedIn. I've got my Twitter. We've got our business Twitter. We've got Facebook. We've got our, um, I think we might even have an Instagram in there maybe. And you can get a report that aggregates the activity for all of those. So what's the overall impression of everything that's going on within our business? When, when taking a look at our Twitter, our Facebook, our LinkedIn, LinkedIn profile, LinkedIn pages. But you also have the ability in the platform to drill down and say, well, you know, what's just going on with our LinkedIn page? versus everything that's happening and you can isolate the data pretty easily to get down and just look at the at the nitty-gritty but i i kind of like the the big picture you know the thirty thousand foot as they say view where you can see everything that's going on because it's not just really one platform because you'll have people that are interact with you on a variety of different platforms based off of the time of the day or if they're on their mobile device versus at the desktop so getting a big picture of all of that is really kind of a cool thing, and it puts all of our social activity really in one spot. So very, very nice. Um, so speaking of dashboards, drum roll, we're going to pop <laughs> over and we're going to just take a, a quick look at a platform called Google Data Studio. And uh, I'm just going to go over to load up the general Google Data Studio page. And actually, that logs me in, so I don't want to do that. I'm going to go to um, a generic Google Data Studio. So I've gone incognito. So, Ellie, let's talk a little bit about GDS and uh, and how we're using it with our clients. Um, and if you recall, there was that one comment we got from a client when we swapped out their creatives and he noticed when he went into his GDS report, a pretty significant spike that we didn't even have to bring to his attention and how that created some conversation. Um, because I think having some sort of a data dashboard, all businesses really need to start thinking about. So give us an overview of GDS. All right, so Google Data Studio. We use this right now for our clients to take their search and display campaigns and their Facebook campaigns and basically anything that has to do with any type of advertising that you can do on any platform online. Uh, we take the raw data and we input it either into a Google Sheet or we drag it in uh, we kind of we link the platforms so like Google Analytics. You can actually drag in the data right from there. But for most of our campaigns, we've just been kind of inputting into Google Sheets. Um, and yeah, right there you can see there's so many ways to connect data to the sheet, which is very cool. Um, so we take that information and we create different types of graphs like time series graphs, bar charts, line charts, pie charts, anything you can think of. There's also uh, scorecards, which is uh, basically it takes the average or total of some type of advertisement and it just places it as a number and it will show you whether it's increased or decreased and by how much in percentage. Um, there's also geo maps. Uh, I think there's heat maps too. There's a crazy amount of different types of ways you can display the information, but it makes it very helpful, especially when you're showing it to a client, because seeing the data visually is always so much easier than looking at numbers and trying to figure out where things are like going up or down. So when we show them the graphs, like Eric was saying, 
we can notice spikes or drops very easily and so can our client and it helps bring up um, conversations like why did that happen or is our budget out or do we need to put more money in do we need to put more uh, time in like there's all sorts of questions that arise and it's good to start a conversation like that because then we know that they're also paying attention to it and we're we're the ones putting in the information it's nice to hear a client uh, ask questions about that stuff because then we can explain it to them rather than them getting mad about it or upset thinking oh my gosh why did we drop down you know to two when we were at 40 and oh because your budget stopped spending or um oh because this or that so it's kind of nice because it it resolves a lot of unknown questions that you wouldn't necessarily catch if you were just looking at the data in a sheet in number form so that's really cool uh yeah and right there off over to the left that's what i was talking about by score sheets so it's cool because you can see the increase or decrease in certain totals or averages of what's going on in the campaign um yep yeah and you can go yeah. you can change the dates and stuff so you, your graphs will change based on that too so that's cool so really there's and and i've pulled up an example so when you go into the report gallery there's a ton of featured reports that you can look at you can take a look at templates very similar to what ellie talked about with wave video is a number of different templates that you can use to get close and then you can customize it for your own liking but the nice part about google data studio is when you give these and what we're starting to do when we do our ad strategy meetings with our clients is we're moving all of the ad data here and then we'll build out other dashboards for them. So we'll tie it into Google Analytics. We'll look at Google Tag Manager and we'll look at events and activities that are going on on their website. And then some of the data that we don't have access to, for example, one of our clients, we're doing mortgage loan advertising and we don't have access to how many loan applications their system actually collects, but we're producing a Google Sheet that's basically an online Excel document that our, our, our contact at the bank can go to, and for the month of July, he can put in, you know, they had 13 applications, and last month they had 11 applications, and the month after, before that, they had 10. And so then once they put that information in, it automatically gets updated. But the cool part about these reports is they're interactive. So the client can go in and instead of just producing a report and saying, hey, here's your activity for the month of June, the client can go in and say, well, I wonder what July looked like, or I wonder what August is what look, look like, assuming August has already happened, which it hasn't. It'll be here tomorrow though. And then each of these can be set up into different pages. So for example, you can see the very first page is Google Analytics. And then the next page in this example goes over to YouTube. And you can see when you hover over, you've got additional data info. And then the last one is a little bit more kind of Google Analytics with engagement. So it, it just gives the client a much more interactive way of looking at their data instead of just accepting the static PDF document that all too often is generated. The link can be shared amongst the organization. So we send it to our marketing contact, but he can put it in minutes. He can distribute it to senior management. Um, and a lot of these reports really are, are built based off of an understanding of what the business's primary objectives are and what do you want to track? And can it be pulled out of some of these data sources? Or do we figure out a way where we can get stuff out of your, you know, your business process and put it into a sheet and then allow for that data to then be presented graphically. So it, it helps to reveal trends and things that, you know, otherwise might hide in the numbers. And uh, another great way of, you know, if you're responsible for managing any of these activities within your organization, the better you can tell your story to your boss, the better it's going to look for you. And you can find areas for improvement and success. So definitely Google Data Studio is uh, is doing some cool stuff there. So we'd encourage you to take a look at it. And of course, we're happy to chat with anybody. I think uh, 
And Ellie, I don't know if I mentioned this to you or not, but at our global convention this year for WSI, I'm not able to attend. I have a couple of other events I'm going to, but there is actually going to be a breakout session covering Google Data Studio from uh, one of our colleagues. And so we as an organization, uh, corporate-wise, WSI, all a thousand offices in 80 countries around the world, are are very committed to trying to figure out the best way to tell the story and help our customers understand really what's going on. And GDS is making it easier for businesses to tap into that data and to have a, the data tell them a story as to what's going on. So pretty exciting stuff. Well, that yeah. finishes the three-piece agenda that we created. Is there <laughs> any other closing thoughts or nuggets of wisdom that you'd like to share with everybody before we sign off? Um, not that I can think of right now. No? Any volleyball tips for aspiring volleyball parents out there? Don't yell at your child's coach. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Assume <laughs> that your child's coach knows what they're doing. So, yeah, Most that that creates a whole other dynamic, not just managing <laughs> the children, but managing the parents of the children. So I coached rocket football for one year, and um, that was enough for me. Third and fourth graders not really even knowing how to get into a three-point stance or – you know, all sorts of fun stuff, but it was pretty cool. So, well, good. <laughs> that can be our next well, one. That'll be our next one. We'll get you through your high school. You can talk about your, uh, your, uh, your record and your win loss and all that stuff. So, yeah. well, in all seriousness, Ellie, thank you for joining me on the show today and kind of sharing some of your insights, um, walking through video and some social stuff. And then, the GDS. I know there's a, a lot of opportunity that we're still exploring on all three of those platforms. And, um, you know, you're a big part of that. So I appreciate you sharing and hopefully the audience got some good ideas out of it as well. So, uh, next week I will tell you, unless I can convince Ellie to do the show by herself, we're probably not going to have a live show. I am actually on my way to Wisconsin and uh, going to do some strategic planning for one of our clients up here. And then next week, um, I'm going to be traveling between Madison and Maryland. I've got two banking schools that I'm presenting at next week. So next week's going to be a little tight. So we're not going to have a show, but we will be back the following week. So enjoy your uh, your first Wednesday in August, and we will catch you on the second one. Um, but for those of you that were here with me and Ellie live, thanks for joining the show. And uh, we'll be back in a couple of weeks. Until then, have an awesome couple of weeks and we'll see you at freewebinarwednesdays.com. Until then, take care everybody. Bye-bye.